Day in the Life, Quality Engineer 2. Since the last time I published a video, I took on a new job and moved. This position is another quality engineering position, but this time it is with a large manufacturer of medical devices. I work in the part of the company that makes disposables, items that can only be used once due to biocontact. My typical day looks like this. At 6.45 a.m., I start my daily commute to work, driving through moderate traffic. At 7.15 a.m., I badge in and head up to my desk. I grab a mug of hot water, I don't do coffee, and run through my emails. At one year in, I've only just gotten started at this large company, so my number of emails is minimal. Once I've run through my emails, I get started on my work for a quality management system bolstering project, a CAPA project, nonconformance review, or other document review. Most of my time is spent on CAPA projects. CAPA stands for Corrective Action Preventative Action. It is shorthand for the actions taken to ensure a problem that occurred will never happen again and will not happen elsewhere in the company. At our company, CAPA projects are broken up into four different stages. Root Cause. In this phase, the CAPA owner pulls together a diverse group of department representatives to talk about what the problem is and how it occurred. The problem definition is extremely important to hash out prior to discussing how the problem happened. It's amazing how often people disagree on what the problem really is. Ensuring everyone agrees on one problem statement will help direct the root cause conversation in an appropriate direction. Once the problem statement is hashed out, the team can focus on finding a root cause for that problem statement. The root cause discussion and analysis can be led using a variety of tools, including five whys, fault tree analysis, Ishikawa diagrams, charting, brainstorming, and hypothesis testing. Usually, for the sake of project scope, less than three root causes are selected as the leading root causes, even if a root cause discussion can highlight over 10 causes. Once the root causes are selected, the owner presents the findings to a group of managers for approval. Planning. In this phase, the owner or project manager pulls together a core team of key people to plan how to address the root causes. The solutions presented can be quite varied, and it is up to the team to select the most effective and efficient solutions. Tools used for generating and narrowing down solutions include benefit-effort matrices and Gantt charts. Some solutions will classify as corrections, some as corrective actions, and others as preventative actions. Corrections are actions that fix the immediate problem. Corrective actions are actions that fix the process which enable the problem to occur. Usually this addresses the environment or procedures currently in place. Preventative actions are actions that ensure the problem will not be occurring with other products or processes in the company not affected by the current problem. During this phase, the core team will also determine how the solutions will be deemed effective. In other words, what metrics will be tracked to prove that the problem has been solved? This plan will be put into action during the effectiveness verification stage. Once plans are put in place for all three categories and for effectiveness verification, the selected solutions are presented to a group of managers for approval. Implementation. In this phase, the core team acts out the plan. If everything goes well, this phase should be a smooth run of doing the actions presented in the plan. Proof of the implementation gets documented in the electronic database, and outcomes get presented to the groups of managers. Of course, this is not usually as smooth as everyone wants it to be, and timeline extension requests occasionally need to be presented for approval. Effectiveness verification. In this phase, data is tracked to ensure the solutions worked. The metrics which had been decided upon during planning are tracked during this phase to see whether or not the plan worked. If it did, everyone is very excited and moves on to other problems. If it did not, a new kappa is opened and the process begins all over again. During the times when I am at my desk working on data visualization or procedures for these projects, I get visitors who are asking for my signature as a quality representative on their document. Documentation and traceability is extremely important in medical devices to prove that our company is in control of its internal workings and to prove that our practices are consistent and to create safe products at all time. We require documentation for all changes, new products, new processes, validations, test method validations, verifications, and tests. Each of these documents requires a multitude of signatures. As a quality engineer, my job is to look in these documents for adherence to our quality management system, or procedures for short, for auditability, and for proper use of statistics. 
Auditability is the most common issue, as even small typos can ruin how auditable a document is. A check for auditability ensures all reference documents are either released or attached, all red lines have been properly signed and dated, and all logic can be followed by someone outside the project. One of the biggest challenges with this part of quality engineering is ensuring that the person who authored the document will be receptive to any necessary changes. It is extremely helpful to have good relationships with a broad spectrum of people in the company. At the end of the day, I've generally spent half of my time giving feedback on documents and half of my time working on CAPA projects. The tasks have me at my desk for a few hours and away interacting with people all across the company for the rest of the day. 4 p.m., I long my hours, shut down my computer, and head out to my car for the drive home.